Is Dracula's Daughter a worthy sequel to the 1931 classic Dracula, or should it stay dead in the past? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be discussing Dracula's Daughter from 1936. Some essential movie details. Even though Bela Lugosi is not in the film, there are actually some pictures of him with Gloria Holden on the set during the production. And there's even a wax statue of him in the movie that has a stake sticking out of him. And another essential movie detail. After production wrapped, Universal's creditor seized control of the studio and kicked out the Lamely family. So Carl Lamely, he and his son Lamely Jr. came up with a bunch of the Universal Monster movies and put the company in a lot of dire straits. You know, they were very poor. And so they were kicked out of the studio (laughs) unceremoniously. And so after this is when they became a lot more strict with their productions and a lot more like a factory rather than an artistic a taking risks type of studio. All right, so now I'll get into the plot for Dracula's Daughter. I gave it a four out of five. I thought it was fantastic. I loved the actress, Glory Holden, who played the daughter and how uh, she kind of played a more a sophisticated character, you know, in, in this version of the story, kind of similar to the Dracula. But in this one, instead of her being just a killer who just is out on the loose, She's more of a character you empathize with because she kind of wants to die. You know, she hates being cursed with this. She feels out of place and wants to be free of being a vampire. But she can't resist, you know, blood and whatnot because it's in her nature, right? And so I really liked that aspect and it was very, very interesting. And no real complaints with it. I, I just don't like how abrupt the ending is and... Like I said, that's standard with these Universal monster movies. Um, But I really, I really, really like this plot. I thought it was really good. All right, in regards to the acting, same thing, really fantastic. Love Gloria Holden, like I mentioned. And uh, she was fantastic as Countess Zaleska. Um, The only character I didn't really like was Jeffrey. You know, there were moments I thought he was pretty cool, but he seemed way too comedic for me and, It's kind of strange that, you know, I think he was a psychologist, maybe a psychiatrist. I don't know. It seemed a little interesting to me that everybody was just so infatuated with him. And I just thought he was kind of weird. (laughs) I don't know. So other than that, though, I I thought the acting was fantastic and a little bit more two dimensional or three dimensional. Even It, it was a little bit deeper than you would normally see in kind of a low budget monster movie. This seemed a lot more sophisticated and a lot more invested actors a lot of them seem more like stage play actors than uh, your typical hollywood ones so i really liked that all right in regards to the directing i gave it a three and a half out of five i thought it was good i i just can't stand that abrupt ending maybe it was the studio maybe it's the director who really knows but to me it was way too easy how Zaleska dies. And it was a little bit silly. It's like a bow and arrow. That was like, this is ridiculous. I <laughs> I thought it was a little too too strange, too silly. It was okay. Not directing. Not terrible. I mean, you know, I, I really liked all the other aspects of it. I loved the setting in London. I loved the camera work. You know, I, I loved all those things. All right, the cinematography and special effects. I gave it a five out of five. I thought it was fantastic. This is the highlight of the movie. Love the costumes, love the exterior shots. Even though it's on a stage, it still was really cool. You know, it's London and it kind of felt a little bit more German expressionist and even more like a film noir with how some of the lighting was. You know, we never see the sun hardly. It's dark all the time and nighttime. So I, I really liked that. I, that perfectly fits the movie and, and perfectly shows how... how Beautiful black and white movies can be sometimes. So yeah, fantastic. Loved the, love the effects. And they were kind of subtle too. We didn't have a whole lot of like bats or anything like that in the, like in the original. 
in regards to the music, it was okay. It was standard, you know, theatrical music. Doesn't stand out too much. Not not anywhere near as iconic as the original Dracula film, which is too bad because I love the music in that movie. So it's kind of a disappointment that the sequel didn't, but it's okay. All right, so tallying that up, that brings my letterbox score to a 3.9 out of the 5, which I'll be rounding to a 4 out of 5. So the question is, would I recommend this movie? Yes, I would. Especially if you're a fan of Dracula like I am. I think I still think that's my favorite Universal Monster movie. You know, it's a different take on the story, and it almost makes you feel bad for the villain. Now, nowadays, that trope is used all the time, and it's kind of tiring now, but... Just thinking how, you know, back in the 30s, that wasn't very common. A lot of movies were kind of black and white. No pun intended, but like they were pretty straightforward. It was very easy to see who's the hero, very easy to see who the villain was. And in this one, Countess Seleska kind of has good and bad traits. You know, the good parts of her is she just wants to be free of her curse. But the bad parts of her, you know, she kills people, right? So it's like, oh, you're a little conflicted with it. And there was a lot of nuance to it. I really liked that. All right. Well, those are my thoughts on Dracula's Daughter from 1936. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. All right. Thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care.